How do you sell something that you aren't passionate about? Yeah, that's a good question. Now there is a way, we're gonna talk about some things that you can do if you're not passionate about what you're selling, how you can do that and how you can sell it. But I also have some recommendations that can help you get that passion. Okay, so let's dive right in first to how can you sell something that you're not passionate about? And I have some personal experience with this, all right? Two, two pieces of advice and I'll illustrate this. Okay, one, solid work ethic. With solid work ethic, just doing the numbers, going through the numbers, you will sell, even if you're not passionate about it. And you can memorize a script. So the company that you work for, that you're doing sales for, they will provide you a script and if you memorize that script and do exactly what you say, even if you're not passionate about it, you will make sales. So here's the story. Uh, going back before I started this company, so about 13 years ago, I was in transition trying to figure out what I wanted to do next. And I wanted to make some quick money. I, I, I had done door-to-door -door sales before and there was a pest control company that would allow me to work locally so I didn't have to leave my family and go somewhere else for the, for the summer. I could work locally, okay? But I had to sell pest control. I'm like, all right, I can do this. So they gave me my, my territory where I could go and, and knock some doors. And I know how to sell. I'm not passionate about pest control. I'm not passionate about killing bugs or protecting against these black widows. But I, they told me the presentation. You see, I go up there, look for spider webs, look for you know snail trails and stuff like that. So I could go up to the door and I knew what to say. And you know what? I was their number one salesperson. It wasn't a huge team, maybe 15 of us, but we did it for a week and I was the number one salesperson. I did it for a few days the next week and you know what? I decided to quit. Even though I was doing really well, I wasn't excited about this and it was, it was miserable. So I quit it and uh, I ended up starting my own company. So the next thing that you can do that I'll talk about, and I'll just relate it to this pest control example, You've got to become a believer. You've got to drink the Kool-Aid, right? So if I wanted to stick in that business in order for me to really handle it and be able to sell it, I would need to maybe watch a lot of scary spider movies, right? Or I would need to study pest control a lot more or, you know, read stories of people that have been bitten by a black widow and their arm fell off, right? You know, the more that I can get myself in that environment and learn to love it, the easier it will be for me to sell. All right, but there's something else you can do as well you could actually quit and go sell something else that you are passionate about. Now, that's probably not what you want to hear. If you're here watching this video, you're probably in that situation. It's like, I'm just not passionate about this, but I, I want to sell more, okay? Know that you have the choice. You can quit and there are other companies out there that have products that you are passionate about. Or obviously you can start your own business and sell your own products and services. Now, there's a problem if this is your company and you're not passionate about your product or service. Now, I have a story to share with that as well. Now, this is a personal story. 13 years ago, when I started this company, I started a web design service. Now, it worked. It was great. And, and what I was passionate about is I loved innovating and figuring out a solution of how to create a custom website design, how to do it efficiently, how to satisfy the client in the least amount of steps. I loved that part of it. But once the system was up and running and we had sold hundreds of, of websites, I, I started to lose excitement about it. What I realized, the thing that I was passionate about is actually helping businesses. I thought, okay, I'm gonna design a website for them that's gonna help their business. It's gonna help them make more sales. But the clients were happy. They had beautiful websites, but they weren't getting traffic to their website. So then I got excited and passionate about SEO. And I offered an SEO service and we got their websites ranked number one on Google. So that was exciting, but then I started to lose that excitement again because even though they had websites and they had traffic, they weren't making sales. <laughs> so I innovated again and I got excited about making promo videos for their website and having them pre present their products or present their services or even present themselves as professional speakers. And so that's what got me into the video space. And just to finish the story, I actually discovered that my videos over on YouTube were getting 50 times more views than these pages ranking number one on Google. So that's when I pivoted my business because I followed the results. The results was what I was really passionate about. So I started the YouTube side of my business 
quickly phased out my web design, my SEO service, even though they worked. I mean, I used to rank number one on Google for dentist website design and for accountant website design. I was number one on Google, but I was more passionate about the results I was getting on YouTube so I pivoted my business. Okay, I wanna talk about influence, okay? Cause I love influence. My book is called A Hero's Guide to Influence on YouTube, right? Influence is me. I love helping people grow their influence. Over the years, I've learned that there's a strong similarity between influence and manipulation. Okay, so manipulation, bad. Influence, good. Now what's the difference? We're both being persuasive when we're using sales, are we being influential? Are we being manipulative? The difference is your intent. If your intent is on their betterment, you're focusing on them and how this is going to help them and bless them. That is called influence. If you're focusing on, I want to make this sale because it's going to bring me revenue or this is going to help me look good or this is going to build my portfolio, then I can say anything I want to manipulate them and get what I want. That's manipulation and we should not do that. Do not manipulate. Okay, so I've got a couple of fun questions for you. Thinking about, you know, you're not passionate about what you're selling right now. Just ask yourself some fun questions. What would I love selling? Like for me, I love mountain biking. I like mountain bikes. I think I would enjoy selling mountain bikes a lot more than, than pest control. Or what about bike tours? Ooh, that would be fun. Taking people to exotic places around the world on mountain biking adventures. I could really sell that. Another question you could ask is, what would be my dream company to work for? I would love to work for this company. I would love to sell their products and their programs. Now, here's a secret that will get you in the door at any company of your choice. Okay, I can't guarantee that, but, but hear me out on this, all right? So there's this amazing company, and let's say they're not even hiring right now, but this company is your dream company. You would love to represent them. You would love to sell their products, their programs, okay? What if you volunteered to work for them for free? What if you said, you know what? I know you're not hiring right now, but I love your company. I'm really passionate about your products. Will you let me work for you for free? What are they gonna say? You can call it an internship. You can call it a test. If you get in there and you're working for free for a week, maybe it'll take a couple weeks. Maybe it'll take a full month, but then you have enough of their attention that they're gonna to wanna to hire you. Now, if any of you do this, I wanna hear about it because this idea has been in my mind. I, I'm a pretty ambitious person and I know some people, some people that are that are really close to that are not ambitious at all and they, they're working in jobs that they don't like and I thought, man, if they could just easily get their dream job, they could go volunteer work for free and I kinda of did that with my services, my first two clients, instead of selling them my service, I partnered with them. I basically gave them my service for free so I could prove myself. Once I had proven myself and these channels took off and started making millions of dollars, then people could hire me for, for my services and, and pay me for my work. So I encourage you to do the same thing, even if it's with a company that you wanna become an employee for. Now in the world of sales, this is called commission only. So offer, say, hey, you don't need to pay me a base at all. Just give me commission only and I'm good to go. There are a lot of companies that would jump at the opportunity to hire you commission only. Now, very closely related to this conversation of how to sell something you're not passionate about is how to set the price for a product or a program. If you watch that episode, you'll learn how you can set a higher price point and get more money for the products and services you're selling. So go watch that one now.